Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to implement the in-memory caching in .NET Core and this is completely free. This is built by the Microsoft and you don't need to use any external uh, cache provider like Redish Cache or something. Redish Cache itself is a very huge one and it's, it's costly. Uh, it may not be applicable for everyone, uh, but application which really depends on huge cache mechanism, they will go for such thing. But for small applications, and uh, this in-memory caching from .NET Core itself is sufficient. Come, let's dive in. So this is the project that uh, is there in the GitHub project, GitHub repository. You can actually download the code. And all what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the product controller and I'm going to inject something called iMemory Cache Interface. OK, this iMemory Cache Interface is injected in the controller. We have the, the private property. So now let's take an example and see how this caching works. Okay, so I'm going to go to the get endpoint of the product, which means I will be passing the ID and I will try to retrieve the particular record. Okay, so in this case, IDs are going to be different uh, sometimes. So what we are going to do is first thing we have to create a key. The key has to be unique. So I'm making it as unique by providing product dash followed by the ID. Okay, so this, this way the key is going to be unique. Now what we do is we first uh, declare a product variable which is not having any it's right now it's null. So what we do is we go to this get uh, try get value pass the key and if the key is present in the memory it will return the product which is value. Okay now if it is not having it will go inside we take it from the database and if it is not in the database itself we return as not found but if it is present in database First time we create an option to store this data for 10 minutes. This can be hours, minutes, seconds, as per your need, you can change it. And then we will set it in the cache by passing the key, the product, the data, meaning the data, and then the cache option. Once this is done, rest and all is same. So come, let's see. So I'm on the product page. Let's take a particular example. I'm gonna pass two. It has come inside. This is there is no such key. You see the key is product dash two. There is no key. Let's see whether it is there in the database. Okay, number two is present. So we got the data. Now this will go inside the statement. We set it and then we run it. So it's gonna give us some data. Okay, I will open up the developer tool so you know how fast it is. So let's close this and run the same number again. This time thirty two milliseconds. 41 milliseconds. It's in two digits milliseconds, 20 milliseconds. Now let's change this to a different number, five, because this time it is not present inside the cache. It will go inside this. You see this 1.53 seconds. So I'm going to remove this breakpoint. Okay. Now if I try the same number five, it's going to be eight milliseconds. You see the difference of where is eight and where is 1.5 seconds. Now let's go and check the second one. See, 15 milliseconds. Now if you try something different, which is not present first time it might take like this and then the second time it is less than that so what i'm trying to say is for small small applications sometimes even in the organization for some application which really doesn't need the reddish cache they go with i memory cache which is inbuilt from the dotnet core and you can implement the same thing in your project also i hope you enjoyed this video and the coding is available in the github repository with a separate branch I will give all the details in the description and if you like this video, give me a thumbs up, comment, subscribe and share this video. Thank you. I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you like my video, don't forget to subscribe my channel, like it, share it, comment it and never forget to click on the bell icon.